In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to equilibrate and simulate your protein or enzyme in VMD with its interface to NAMD. <clears throat> and so the first thing we want to do is uh, do some calculations with those values that we obtained in the previous tutorial uh, that indicated the size of our protein. And so just to remind you what we did is we set a variable um, to capture all of the positions of the atoms in our structure. That is this command here. And then we measured the minimum and maximum of that uh, data. And we got uh, two arrays of XYZ values, uh, a minimum and a maximum. And we copied those into Excel. And so what I'm going to do now is do some calculations that will be necessary for running the simulations. So just to give some titles here, going to copy and paste our min and max values. Get the x minimum the y minimum the z and then we'll get our maximum values x Y and Z. And I'm just copying and pasting here into these cells. And since we don't need that anymore, I'm going to delete it. And what we want to calculate is the center of the structure and the overall size of the structure in each dimension. So I'm going to give those x sub c and y sub c for the center, z sub c, and then I'll give subscript size for the full size of the cell. So to calculate this, we just need to take the average of the x values. So we add them together and divide by 2. For the size, we simply take the difference between the maximum and the minimum. So we subtract them and then repeat those calculations for the other dimensions. And it should be that the center might have negative values if your uh, cube of water is uh, not exactly at 0, 0, 0 in x, y, and z, which it's not very likely to be. The size values should all be positive numbers because that's indicating the, the actual length of each side of the cube that you created. So once we have those, we're going to go back into VMD and we're going to go into the extensions menu and under simulation, we're going to open the NAMD graphical interface. And assuming that we have everything loaded, um, 
it puts us in our directory that we've already um, changed to in the console. It gives a an output simulation base name. I'm going to add to this not only the water box, but I'm going to add an MD for molecular dynamics to the simulation base name. The input files should be your stru protein structure file and your PDB that were already loaded. If you don't have any um, non-protein molecules, uh, for example, if you've taken out ATP and sulfates and magnesium ions and things like that, uh, the default parameter files should be just fine for your, uh, for your work. Um, you'll need to do some searches and I will put um, in the uh, description here the names of some parameter files that you would need to use if you want to have ATP, for example, or a phosphorylated amino acid. So look for those in the, the comments down below um, if you want, to, or I'm sorry, in the description of this video if you want to see what those might be. I'm going to run both a minimization and a molecular dynamics simulation as one sort of batch. Um, what will happen here is NAMD will try and minimize the energy of the structure, finding the most likely configuration um, that's nearby to what we started from. The reason to do the minimization is because many of these structures come from doing X-ray crystal crystallography where the structures were um, determined at very, very low temperatures, um, typically liquid helium or liquid nitrogen temperatures. That makes the structures not very realistic at room temperature, and so it's a good idea to do minimization before starting your dynamic simulation. Um, a thousand steps should be enough for this purpose. If you really want to um, get into this uh, as a deep research endeavor, there are several things you can do that include holding the water molecules fixed or holding the protein fixed while you minimize the other. So for example, you might hold the protein fixed and minimize the solvation energy. Um, and then after doing that, minimize the protein and solvation together. Um, that's a much more complicated thing to do and I'm not going to detail it in this tutorial, but know that there are um, some examples out there on the University of Illinois website um, to talk you through how to do those sorts of things. For the molecular dynamics simulations, um, I'm going to increase this to 1 million steps. And it's not a continuation from having simulated before, so I'm not going to change that. Um, the number of steps is going to correspond essentially to the total amount of time that the protein has um, been allowed to shake under its equilibrium condition. Um, so the longer, the, the more steps you put, the longer it will simulate, but it also takes longer amounts of time to do this. Um, one million steps, if the step size is one or two femtoseconds, means that you're getting something on the order of nanoseconds worth of simulation, um, which doesn't sound like much, but that's a fairly typical, somewhere between one and a hundred nanoseconds is a fairly typical length of time to simulate. Um, so that's why we're going to do this. If you decided that you wanted to do more, you could use this continue simulation where you start from the output of this simulation that we're demonstrating here. So before we can run, we need to go in and edit some parameters. So we click on Edit Ensemble. NVE, these just stand for the number, the volume, and the energy, and NVE is a good selection. It's considered in statistical physics the microcanonical ensemble. That is the uh, ideal situation to use if you're wanting to look at the time-dependent dynamics of a protein. Um, experimentally, it's not very realistic. It would be very difficult in a laboratory to make sure that the energy of a system remains constant. And so the most 
applicable to a laboratory experiment would be to hold the number of atoms in your simulation, the volume of your simulation, and the temperature of your simulation constant. So that's what we're going to do. Um, that's considered the canonical ensemble. And you can look that up on Wikipedia or something to get a better understanding of what the difference between those two are. We're going to simulate at biological temperatures of 310 Kelvin. That's about 37 Celsius. And we need to select periodic boundary conditions to make sure that our cube of water uh, remains a cube of water during the simulation. So the, the periodic boundary conditions just tell NAMD that we want to keep the volume of that cube the same throughout the, the simulation. So that's holding this V in NVT constant. You'll get an error message that says that it couldn't find a file. It's OK. Click OK. It should automatically create one, and you can then click on Edit. And in this cell, this is where we're going to insert the information from the, uh, from the Excel file that we just used, that we just created. And so what we want to do is, in these cells, we want to enter the, the length of the x, y, and z directions. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put for cell 1, that corresponds to the x. We're going to put this size, 56.796 angstrom. And we're going to then enter that here, 56.796. And we're going to say that the other cells in this particular direction, the x direction, don't have any size. They're 0. We're going to repeat that for the y direction, so 52708. And since that's the y direction, we actually need to put a 0 for the x direction and a zero at the end for the z direction. Finally, we'll put in the z, and so we need zero for the x, zero for the y, and 55.249 for the z. And these are just separated by a space, so there's no need to do anything other than put a space in between the numbers. For the origin, those are the centers that we calculated. So it will be minus 16.61 space 47.665 space 48.45, and I'll round up to 7. And then we can click OK. If we go back here, once we've clicked OK, those should now be saved. So if I click Edit again, those numbers will stay there. If we select this particle mesh box, then uh, what will happen is the program NAMD will create a grid where it calculates the electrostatic interactions, charge the interactions between charges uh, on a grid rather than calculating them for every distance between every atom in the, the protein structure. So that's a way of speeding up your simulation, but because you're calculating something on a grid, it is going to give you a little bit less accuracy than it would uh, if you didn't use that. But we're going to check it for the just for the sake of speed. And so once we're done, we can just click the X to close that window. And just to go through some of the other possibilities, I mentioned that you could fix atoms uh, for a minimization. So if you were to click fixed atoms, you could change the selection here. You could put water, for example, or you could put protein. And then you could run a minimization on just the unfixed 
parts of the structure that you have. If we go into other simulation parameters, we can change some of the things as far as how often a calculation is done. Um, and so this first one is called output control. That's just how often do you want information to be saved uh, for you. The more that you save information, the larger your files get, but the more information you have for analysis later. You can change the time stepping. Um, so here where the time step is one femtosecond, you could change that to two to make your simulation run faster. The larger this is, the uh, less accurate your simulation will be. And then you can also tell it how often to recalculate some of the uh, particular interactions, like interactions between non-bonded atoms or electrostatic interactions. We're just going to leave the, all of these at the default settings. Same thing goes for the basic dynamic parameters. You can determine um, where the program stops calculating um, particular interactions like Van der Waals forces, um, and that's for the sake of um, speeding up the simulation at a loss of accuracy in the in the values that you get. Um, so you can either run fast or you can run slow, and if you run more slowly with more time step, uh, with smaller time steps, uh, more often calculating things, calculating things out to further distances, um, you gain accuracy, but you lose in the computational speed at which you get your result. Um, these simulation space partitionings are also, they're a continuation of uh, expediting your simulation by telling the program where to stop calculating interactions because they become too small. So for example, an interaction that has uh, a dependence as one over a distance um, will get very small as the distance gets large. And so you can, you can just say after a certain distance that becomes too small for me to worry about calculating. We're also going to leave those at the default values. And finally, TCL forces, um, you can create scripts in the TCL programming language that uh, augment the, force, the forces that are calculated in your simulation. So if you have a special situation where there's a force that's not typically calculated in molecular dynamics and, you know, simulations, you can put that into a script file and, and use that. Okay, so we're keeping it really simple, keeping everything sort of at default values with the exception of molecular dynamics. We're going to increase it so that we get quite a few data points. Since our time step was one femtosecond, um, doing this for one million steps means that we'll get one million femtoseconds uh, which is one nanosecond worth of simulation. And this will probably take, with the minimization and the molecular dynamics, um, probably on the order of an hour or two to simulate, depending on the computer that you're using. I'm just using a laptop computer, um, and so it will probably take about an hour for this to simulate. If you want to speed things up again, you can change your time step or you can reduce the number of steps that you simulate the protein. Uh, at this point, we should be ready to uh, start our simulation. And so what we're going to do is uh, just click Run NAMD, and it's going to use all of our input files and all of those values that we set to run. So I'm going to click that. And you can see things happening in the console window as I do that. Um, and as long as it's still running, you're going to see this status running. And when it's finished, that should go away. I believe it returns to saying status uh, ready, or maybe that just disappears. And this button that says stop NAMD will return to saying run NAMD. Uh, and just to show you, if you go into your directory where the simulations are occurring. Some new files will show up. There are these here. 
The DCD file is the file that actually stores the simulation information. And so when this completes, we will open that and we'll do some analysis with it. And that will be the subject of a future tutorial video. So that's how to simulate your protein in, in NAMD using the interface that is available in VMD.